Life is rough. You gotta take the time to focus on what brings you joy. As the Japanese say, ikigai. Or, what am I nerding out about right now? <laughs> Join us at the gaming table. Or reading nook. To find your happiness. I'm Lainey. I'm Marshall. And this is Elated Geek. Hello, everyone. Hello. Tonight, uh, because it is night for us when we are recording this, we have a little comfy book wrap-up of May for you. And by comfy, I mean I'm in pajamas. I'm in what I wear shortly before I get to bed, <laughs> which is just shorts and a t-shirt. Right. I think today we had a really productive day where we cleaned out our garage, so we were just in the mood to get a little comfortable. Mm -hmm. We have some tea should pull up your tea, listen yeah. in. What what are you drinking over there? This is a strawberry sensation tea, uh, Ahmad tea of London. It's like a black tea with strawberry, right? Yeah. Yes, it's very good. Mm -hmm. I am drinking Twining's Glow Nettle Tea. It's a strawberry and cucumber green tea. It's supposed to promote healthy glowing skin, which I really like how it smells. I'm kind of interested because normally you're not that into cucumber. I'm not, uh, but for cucumber, it's more of a texture of cucumber that I don't uh, like and not the smell of cucumber. As you know, my favorite scent is cucumber melon. Interesting. See, like, I can't stand the smell of cucumber. Do you want to smell this? See, I get the, the hint of strawberry in there, and that's just fine, but the other half of it just, hmm, that's a no. So sad. Yeah. It tastes very nice. Ah. All right, so enough about the tea. Let's talk about what we're really here to talk about. And that would be books. So I have to say I've noticed a pattern in my reading. I go from reading 13 books to 17 books to 25 books, back to 17 books, and then 13 books. Mm. So it kind of like goes to peak. I'm very amazed at the fact that they are the same numbers. So May for me was a valley I, I had a very hard time reading. I felt not motivated to read that much, which is sad because I read a lot of really good books this month, but I just, I had a hard time. For me, I got some really good books, but also Corey and I are going to be doing a podcast on space adventures. Mm, okay. So uh, we did a lot of reading for that. And you're going to see that reflected in our numbers. So a lot of these comics that you're reading, it's going to be reviewed on another podcast? Correct. Okay. So we're really going to wait until then to talk about all of those. So I read 13 books this month. How many did you read? Oh, ouch. I read 24. Oh, good for you. But that's because you read some comics, right? Yeah, 17 of those were comics. See, I I think that one of the reasons why I got hung up so bad is because I started trying to read House of Leaves, which is over 700 pages. And I have to be in the right mood to read that book yes. because it takes a lot of energy. I'm still, I, I'm still pretty much at the beginning of this book. And so I think that's what held me up. <laughs> through That's, a lot of me too. <laughs> I just started reading that too, and I can totally get where you're coming from. You have to be in the right frame of mind. It is very dense. Yeah. Very dense. I think I'm going to have to go read more after this podcast because <laughs> I, I, I took too long, and now I'm like, ah. But I know we usually talk about this at the end, but I am currently reading The Maidens by yeah. Alex Michaelitis, and I am super excited reading this book. It is so good. Uh, I haven't got to any twisty things yet. It's still being set up, but so good. And I am reading Malibu Rising. This one is by Taylor Jenkins Reid, and I'm very much enjoying that, and I have no idea why. Taylor Jenkins Reid has done a few others that I've enjoyed, and we'll be talking about one of those later, I think. I think it's really cool that you discovered a new genre of book and an author that you really, really enjoy that you probably never would have picked up before. I think that what's really great about Taylor Jenkins Reid is how she takes these historical fictions and really makes them feel like a part of that place and time and then makes it feel like it's real. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with you. I love that. So if you're into the characters, you're really into them. Uh, it's true. Yeah, you really fall in love with at least one of the characters in each book. I think I am not sponsored by Book of the Month, by the way, but if you are not a fan of Book of the Month or 
if you are not receiving Book of the Month. This month, you can get both The Maidens and Malibu Rising yeah. as your choice. I didn't get either one of them, though, because I already had them from an advanced copy of NetGalley. But I mean, I would love to be sponsored by them. I'm not going to lie. However, uh, if you guys want to get Book of the Month, this is the month to do it because, oh my gosh, the books are fantastic. I did end up getting Half Sick of Shadows, which is a retelling of Lady of Shalott. And if you are not familiar, I am named after the Lady of Shalott. So I was really wanting to read this book a lot. And in fact, this was one of the books that we mentioned as being on our list of what we wanted to read this year. Exactly. Um, I was really surprised to find that when I saw it coming up. It's like, ooh, Lady I would was love too. this. I was very surprised. So yes, we are super excited for mm -hmm. all of that. And that was a lovely tangent. Anyway, so a total books for the year so far. For me, has been 85. How are you doing over there? 64 books so far this year. Nice. So Nothing to sniff at? Nothing nothing bad. Right? And considering no, we're, that we're not at the halfway point of the year yet, yeah. I think you're well on your way to, to reading your 104. Yeah. And, and I am almost there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I just need a couple more months. I should be there. Pages. I read 4,479. I read 4,413. Oh, wow. I beat you by... Yeah, I'm actually a little upset by this. <laughs> oh, no. Because when I then took that in to see how many levels I gained, I was just 600 pages away from leveling up to 20. Uh -huh. I'm at level 19 right now. Oh. I am at a year total pages of 29,750 which puts me at what? Level 23. So we both only went up by one level. Oh, so how many total pages for the year do you have? I have 17,147. Oh, man. Yeah. Which puts you at level, you said 19? Yeah. Oh, uh, you'll get there. I'll get there. You're reading a lot more comics, so I think you're gonna... It does slow down the page progress. Right. But... I get through a lot more of them, and I get to see a greater variety of stories. I could see that. Let's break down our stats for you a little bit further for the month of May. I have three five-star books, eight four-star books, two three-star books, and nine books that I did not finish. I was in a, a very moody reader. I almost stopped reading as many books as I read. See, and I think that's another thing that gets you, is that when you're in these uh, valley times, you DNF a little bit more. I really do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I had five five-star books, 12 four-star books, and seven three-star books. I generally enjoyed what I was reading. I didn't think that anything was bad. Yeah, it was a solid month for books, I have to say. As far as types of books, I did read six adult books, and I read seven either young adult or middle grade books this month, which I don't think I usually read more young adult than regular adult, but... I don't keep track of young or middle or... Mostly because you read a lot of comics, so... I read a lot of comics, but, you know, I also... I don't personally care about the difference. Yeah, it's just I like to track a bunch of different things, I think. Yeah. As far as types of books, I read four thriller or horror books, three fantasy or sci-fi books, five romance or contemporary books, and one nonfiction book this month. I have one mystery, one horror, two other, which actually they're different from each other in the kind of other that they are. And then 19 science fiction because we're <laughs> dealing with space. Wow. Yeah. And I actually, I don't know how much you break down, but I actually broke down uh, how I'm getting these books. So I have two that were audiobooks, mm -hmm. seven that were ebooks, and five that were physical books, like physical copies of books. And I have to say that of those, two were either given to me or I got in a swap of some kind. Two of them I got from NetGalley, one of them from the library, three I purchased myself, four I got review copies of in one way or another that weren't like NetGalley, and one of them was a book of the month. I read two ebooks, three audiobooks, two physical books. And 17 comic books. <laughs> Slash graphic novels? Yeah. When I'm talking about comic books, 
Uh, I'm specifically talking about trade paperbacks. Gotcha. So we're we're looking at things that are a hundred pages or more because mm-hmm. there are a whole bunch of different ones. Well, now that our stats are out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about the books we actually read. Now, what we're going to do in this case is we are going to talk about our three stars because it looks like we both had three stars, four stars, and five stars. And when we get to our five stars, it's actually funny because two of my five stars are actually two of his five stars. So we're going to have good discussion about those that we read at the same time. For the other ones, I'll just kind of give a brief synopsis and my thoughts. But if you're looking for full reviews on the books that I read, you can go to my Instagram because as of now, all of the May book reviews have been posted. So you can go and check those out there. What I thought, that's at Zany Laney on Instagram. Or if you want to look at www.zanylaney.com, I do have them there as well. Are we ready? Let's do this. All right. So I'll get one out of the way real quick. I read a book called Good Gut, Great Health. And I don't. it's like two different authors. I can't remember who they're by, but they did get a three star for me because... I wanted to learn more about a good gut health because we have a diet that we're trying to follow right now that's supposed to help with gut health. And so I was reading this book looking to see if there were any good recipes that we could follow since we have trouble finding that or anything that would help us on this journey. I didn't think this book was that great. I didn't find the background to be as good as other ones that I've read. And the recipes just didn't seem accessible to me. It was like lamb or rabbit or I don't know. It was like everything was were things that either I wouldn't eat or that I couldn't find at Target or another grocery store in my area. So I just didn't think it was helpful to me. So I gave it three stars. I had one called The Alchemist's Kitchen by Guy Ugaloy. This is this was a book all about alchemy, the old what later became chemistry and the mythologies behind it, the symbology behind it. It was interesting, but you couldn't really do anything with it. Oh, really? The, I did find out a couple of interesting things. Like, it gives you kind of how to make painting pigments, which is interesting. Mm-hmm. And I also learned some stuff that in India, they had taken heavy poisonous metals and diluted them using alchemy to making medicines. It was really interesting. And they're, they're actually experimenting with that nowadays. Not that useful, but interesting. My last three-star book is The Escape Room by Megan Golden. I had read The Night Swim. I think you also read The yes. Night Swim. And this book is actually about a group of people who are in an elevator escape room, they think. And I had very high hopes for this book. Because of the author, I really love The Night Swim and an escape room game concept. I thought that was really interesting as well. But it quickly turns into not as much escape room and more thriller horror Okay. instead. And I just, I really felt like there could have been a lot more escape room elements in this. There are quite a few twists in this book. Which I appreciated, but I just felt like there could have been a better way to bring it across that would have made it more clever. So I only gave it three stars. Didn't recommend it to you, even though I know you like escape room themed scenarios. I just don't think it was well executed. Okay, okay. The rest of my three star list, it's from comic books. A lot of them were Star Trek comic books, but you're really going to see that in my talk with Cole. So then we're moving on to our four stars then. And the first one I want to talk about is a book that I know Marshall is going to want to listen to because it's kind of a Ready Player One meets The Matrix, maybe, book thing. Okay, so it's called Rabbits by Terry Miles. And it is about them playing this game, but nobody really talks about the game, but it's Kind of like, you know, you're playing the game when you see things that are different from the other time that you've seen it or in one reality to another reality. Okay, so let me let me give you an example of this. It's really hard to talk about this book without totally giving away what is happening. For example, I could look up a picture of the Fremont troll in Seattle. It's this clay troll that lives under a bridge and he's yep. holding a Volkswagen bug I want to say and so somehow in this book uh, the the main character goes by and the troll is no longer holding a bug he's holding an entirely different car 
And so he's like, what? And so I stopped reading the book and looked up online exactly what the Fremont troll looks like and what car he's holding. But it was kind of a cool concept, in my opinion, because not only is it this really cool thriller story about a game and things are happening and people are disappearing when they play the game and why, but you can take instances of things that happen in the real world and look them up and be like, wait, wait, is that true? Or is that not true? So this sounds what like what's called an ARG, an alternative reality game. Kind of. Where the game blurs the line with reality. Well, I can't talk about it too much, and I cannot confirm or deny that that is what this book is about. Because that's part great. of it. Part I'm, of the I'm very interested. In yeah, that. so that actually, I believe, uh, comes out tomorrow at the time that this podcast goes up. It will be out tomorrow. Okay. The 8th of June. So, yes, I already told Marshall he needs to put a hold on it if he can find it at the library and on audio because it's good. The ending is a little bizarre for me, personally. I had to think about it, but... But with this sort of a subject, if it doesn't have a bizarre ending, it might have been too easy. Correct. So, for my first four stars, actually, I've got two separate books, but they're pretty much the same thing. Both of them are Star Wars books. One is called The Book of Sith. And the other one is called The Bounty Hunter Code. Both of them were written by a guy named Daniel Wallace. And both of these are books that exist in the universe. And characters that are in the stories have gotten a hold of it and they're writing in the margins. Very much like how we see in House of Leaves. Mm -hmm. So you have this book of Sith that Emperor Palpatine and Darth Vader have all written in and then Luke Skywalker finds it and he starts writing his own notes. It's very interesting to make the universe deeper and I really enjoy this style of book. My next four stars is called The Royal Wedding and it is by Melanie Summers. Again, I'm reading through Melanie's books and this is the, I think it's the Crazy Royal Love. I don't know. I can't remember the subheadings of some of these. She's got three series and they're all take place in the same universe. If you like that kind of thing, you will love this, honestly. But this is the Royal Wedding. This is actually where she's like a blogger. She blogs about the Royal Family, but she also does jogging equipment as well. She has a couple different websites. And so she was invited in the first book to come and live with the royal family. And she falls in love with the prince. You know, it's that as whole Cinderella does. thing. Yes, as one does. And in this book, it's all about them and the wedding. And I thought that the, there were some, you know, usual tropes about marrying the prince, class, that kind of a thing. But then uh, there were some others that were not as usual. And I thought that was cool. Um, this month, I'm actually reading The Royal Delivery, which is the one that obviously it's about a baby. I think. Um, So it's book three. And and that one is I'm reading this month. I'm going to be skipping pretty much all the comic books. There's a lot of them that are four stars for me. So I'm going to skip right to Troy by Stephen Fry. So I got this. I believe we got this from Libro because we are affiliate influencer, part of their influencer program or whatever. And Troy was one of the ones from last month. And it's so excellent that they gave this to me because I really love the first one, which is Mythos. Uh So this one recounts the the Trojan Wars, he actually goes into this thing about how the line between history and mythology, because it really did happen, mm-hmm. but all these myths got involved in it, and now you can't tell the timeline anymore. And he had to deal with that in writing this. It's just really good scholarly and hilarious narrative work. He's really funny. Hmm. So funny. My next four-star book is called Nutcracked, and it's by Susan Adrian. And I know what you're thinking. Lainey, why are you reading a Christmas book in May? Well, I'll tell you. (laughs) I had a challenge that I was doing in book club. It's like for two months, they're doing like this whole game of life board. And I had to read a book that was less than 250 pages. And I wanted to get it done fast. And I think I was off that day. And I, I didn't have anything that was under 250 pages except for this book. And I was like, I was going to wait until like November or December to read this, but I'm reading the Green Glass House series. So I don't know if all the time, I'll just read it. Basically, it is the story of the Nutcracker. And if you watch On Point on Disney Plus about how they prepare for the Nutcracker performance in ballet, that's kind of what this book is. So this girl is in a ballet company and she gets the part of Clara 
And when she touches the Nutcracker, it transports her into the Nutcracker's world. Okay. And she thinks the Nutcracker is asking her to save him because he has been trapped there for a certain amount of years. And this is very much a middle grade book, I'm going to tell you also. It is is definitely a younger reader book, but it was so magical and beautiful. And if I was reading it during Christmas, it would be all the vibes of the holiday. And I would probably be like, this is wondrous and magical, but I'm reading it in May. So it wasn't quite like that, <laughs> but I was I was there. Like, I was there for it. But really, when you get down to it, Florida in Christmas and Florida in May, not a huge difference. Kind of true. Yeah. So I, I'm also going to be honest with something else. I have no clue what the plot of the Nutcracker Suite is. Honestly, okay. I'm, I'm going to break it down very easily. So the Nutcracker is the a Nutcracker that is given to her, and then the egg, he gets broken. And then she's really sad. She goes to sleep. And when she wakes up, the Nutcracker is a full per, a full size person. And then there's like a mouse, a rat king, I think. And then they have like a battle with some soldiers and some rats. And then she ends up being with the prince. And then there's this huge like show kind of thing with like, I don't know if you've ever seen like the mother and she has the kids underneath her skirt and she comes out. I've heard and then stories there's, like, of it. Swans. And then there's one where it's like candy. So it's all like different themed dances during this, like the, the second half of the celebration, but it's still part of the story. It still makes sense. If you watch the whole thing, I have only seen it a couple times. I have watched them preparing to do it. So I'm a little familiar with it, but I am not like the hugest fan of the Nutcracker ever. Is there like some sort of subplot where the Rat King takes away children that stay up too late at night? Uh, there might be. I'm just not 100% sure at this moment. Because for some reason, that's what sticks with me. And I have been terrified of the Rat King since I was a little child. Yeah, it's not It's not fun. If you know, if you are a fan of Nutcracker, please email share at elated.com. Yeah, give us, the, give us the story of the Rat King. I, <laughs> I, I, I want to know, was I just scared of my own imagination? Which happens so since Marsh only has comic books for four stars, let's go talk about the rest of mine. I have a book called We Were Liars. This is by E. Lockhart. It is a book that is written in kind of like a fairy tale allegory style about a family that inhabits an island during the summer, like off of New York, Boston area on the East Coast. And there were things that happened on the island Uh, I think there was a fire and like one of the houses burned down or something. But the point of view, the main point of view she talks about in the present and the past. And then there's four of them and they're called the liars. They call themselves the liars. And that's kind of a sticking point for me because they never really explain why they are called the liars. Unless you read the book club notes. If you have that edition, it then explains that more. But if you're reading the story, they don't really explain that. So the liars, they cause trouble kind of they're kind of just left on their own to cause a little bit of mischief or whatever but the one main character can't remember things that happened before and they know there's some kind of accident and she's trying to figure out what this accident is okay it was very well written but even now trying to talk about this book is very hard very hard for me. It was actually recommended to me the same way Never World Wake was, and we will talk more about that book in a little bit. And I feel like it was in the same vein, but I did not like it as much. And that's why I never, I, I didn't tell you you should read mm-hmm. it either. But it is, it was a very interesting book, and the way it was written was very good, so I gave it four stars. Can't really say much more about it, because the less you know about it, the better. Okay. Yes. I also read People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. This was a very popular book in the month of May for a lot of people. She also wrote Beach Read, which was a surprising book to me that I did not like that much. This book, however, I did like more. It is about uh, a, 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 like, best friends. And it is told in the present where she goes to Palm Springs with him. She works for a travel magazine. And she goes to Palm Springs with him for his brother's wedding. But they have had a falling out before then. And it also takes place in the past where every summer they go on vacation 
together as best friends. And they're always like dating someone new or whatever. And you find out why they had a falling out. And then (laughs) what happens on their main vacation? You might think it's a little boring. It is not boring. It it actually kind of gives me vibes of he started it. It kind of a little bit is, but I would say it's more romantic comedy and not thrillery. Okay. Sounds good. I started off the month reading 10 Truths and a Dare by Ashley Elston. I really liked this book, but it is more of a younger adult book. And it is about a girl who was super smart. She's the valedictorian of her school and she's graduating. And during graduation week, there's basically parties, sometimes two or three parties every single day. But she finds out because she took golf uh, and she took it as like a off-campus requirement and didn't go enough. She didn't fulfill the PE requirement. So she has a week to try to make up this PE requirement before she graduates or else she's going to lose her spot at this. I think it's Harvard that she's going to. And her spot as a valedictorian. Her mom and dad are out of town, so she wants to hide it from them. And at the same time, she has to pretend like she's going to all these parties because her mom can follow her phone on GPS, which is one of the stipulations of her staying there by herself. Even though she's got a huge family that are all up in each other's business all the time. There's like 40 people in this family. Grandparents, aunts and uncles. Friends, cousins, like, they're all there. They're all up together. So I think three of her cousins, or, like, two of her cousins and a girlfriend of theirs, helps her by taking her phone to these various parties while she's trying to complete this PE assignment. It was wacky and fun, and not only that, it was surprisingly touching as well. And I really enjoyed this book a lot, especially if you're really liking your adult books. I would... Check this out, because I think it's it's really good. This sounds like something that would make a really great Netflix movie. I agree. It probably would. It probably uh, would. Yeah, because it's just so much... It sounds like there's so much zany going on there. <laughs> probably. Yeah. A friend of ours wrote a book called Dawn of the Elite. Her name is Andrea Berenger, and so she reached out to me to see if I would read this book. This book is about these twins who can communicate with each other in their brains. It's called Duocom. And they are also soldiers, but they are being asked to be in a competition. They don't know why, because these soldiers have never been allowed to do this competition before, but they have always wanted to, so they go, and a bunch of them do. And when they end up finding out the real reason behind the competition and what they've been drafted to do, it's all very interesting and secretive. This is like a sci-fi soap opera. That is what... Okay. That that it's being marketed as a sci-fi soap opera. It was very well written, especially for someone like me who doesn't like sci-fi books that are totally sci-fi. Yeah. I just don't like it. I need some kind of other element. And so this book kind of surprised me. There was a lot of relationship, love triangle kind of things happening in this book. So if you like that kind of thing, you might like this book. And then before we jump into like some five star stuff, I have to kind of do a four and five star book together Uh, because I read the Curvy Girls Club series by Kelsey Stelting. I try to read one book a month. This month I read two for reasons. The first book is Curvy Girls Can't date best friends it is the fifth book in the curvy girls series obviously about a girl and a guy who have been friends since i would say they were like 12 maybe maybe even younger i can't remember and they live next door to each other and they've always just been friends and all of their friends are like why are you guys not together and it's been like this for the first five books like why are they not together you know they're obviously great for each other this book dives into what happened to the guy as he was growing up, and it is heartbreaking. It is so, oh, I, 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 I read this book not, I, it was unexpected to me what happens in this book in such a way that I, it just, I felt so much for the guy. And usually in these books, I don't connect to the guys very much. I always connect to the girls. But in this book, I connected to both of them so much. So I had to give that one five stars. And I'm telling you this beforehand because the next book I read, which is book seven. Yes, you heard that right. I skipped book six. So book seven is Curvy Girls Can't Dance. 
So the reason why I skipped book six, which I actually am going back to read this month, is because Curvy Girls Can't Dance just came out. And as I'm part of her street team, I wanted to help promote it right around the time that it was published. Yeah. So Curvy Girls Can't Dance is one that I connected with a lot more. And I gave it, not a lot more, but I connected as well. And I gave it four stars because I didn't like it as much as book five, but I, I did like it a lot. And it is a new batch of Curvy Girls. Okay. So starting from book six on, it is basically like a couple years younger than the first set of Curvy Girls. They all went to college. Or whatever else they were doing with their life after high school. And so one of those girls' sister is in the new batch. And so she's the one who kind of connects the new girls. And so this one was about a girl who she was, was is a great dancer, fantastic dancer. And her dance teacher puts her into an outfit that is very tight and spandexy. And she ends up busting a seam in the middle of a dance competition and the dance teacher yells at her and tells her that she will no longer be a part of the dancing company. And the girl doesn't know what to do with herself because she's been going to the doctor. She runs, she dances, she's on a diet and she can't lose weight. And then she, she finds out she not only has a thyroid problem, but her doctor recommends that she goes and starts trying to lift weights as a way to just kind of like try something new since she can't dance right now. So the guy that she meets actually lifts weights competitively and they kind of get together and she ends up teaching him how to dance. Really cute book. And I gave it four stars because I thought it was just adorable. That That's nice. Now, you actually used to be in dance. I, I was very much like this girl, which is why I connected with her. I hurt my knee. I had an ACL, so I cannot dance as well as I used to, but I can still dance a little. I have rhythm. Yeah, I can only really do anything when I have arrows. <laughs> Are we ready to move on to five stars? I am. So, Never World Wake by Marisha Pessel was this interesting book about this girl and her used to be friends kind of they all get into a car wreck and they wake up the next morning and it's the day before mm -hmm. they are stuck in a groundhog day with one little difference groundhog day never had this creepy keeper guy come up and say okay y'all gonna have to come together and vote for which one of you survives Yep. So they do. Yeah. For many of. iterations of the same day, kind of. It's not like Groundhog Day in that the same thing happens over and over again. And it's not like Groundhog Day in that it's the same amount of time either, which... The, the physics of this thing. situation were really interesting. It really, it really was. I really... I got so surprised by the eventual ending of mm -hmm. this book because I not only didn't expect it, but the way that they reveal what is happening, I really thought I was going to get bored. Oh, mm -hmm. we're going to do this like 57,000 times. But she did a really great thing with this where you just skipped all the reiterations and just went, oh, yeah, this is the highlights. Mm hmm. And I love that. There's one episode of Stargate where they did the same thing. Right. They skipped a lot of those reiterations and just showed you them playing golf through the Stargate. Yeah. Yeah. And this was this was a really good book about a lot of different things. Mm hmm But also deep about psychology. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. There's also a, uh, a murder mystery going on in here. But they, like, figuring out the roots of that kind of is core to the story here. Yes, exactly. Yeah, it was it was just a surprising read, and I'm so glad that both of us thought it was five star worthy. Yeah, it was it it caught me. Mm -hmm. uh, I was I was really into the mystery of it, especially because you had no idea who knew what. Right, yeah. And what was great is that none of these characters really even knew what was what. They didn't even know themselves what they knew. Exactly. That was really great. Yeah. Uh, another one that I read was by Taylor Jenkins Reid, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Now, I've already read Daisy Jones and the Six, and I was kind of okay with it. But this book really got me. What this, what this is, is that this 
Hollywood starlet is kind of getting on in her years and she's going to donate some of her dresses to Hollywood and she reaches out to this blogger who works for a blogging company to tell her life story. Mm -hmm. And she doesn't know why she was picked. She's a nobody. And that mystery right there is what's dragging you along to the story. You're like, why? There has to be a reason. What's going on here? And I'm figuring somewhere in this story it's going to tell us. I'll let you know you will find out. So stick it through because Evelyn Hugo's story is a great one. It Mm kind of gets you through all these nasty things in Hollywood history and American history. And it talks about civil rights movements and all sorts of things. It's really good. This was even more of a historical fiction than Daisy Jones and the Six was. Right. And that's why I wanted you to read it in the order that you read it in because... I didn't think Daisy Jones and the Six was as good as this book. And I read Evelyn Hugo first. And it is the type of book that really stays with you. Even now, it's been a couple months since I've read it. And I remember exactly what happens. And I remember exactly how I felt when I read it. And that is the mark of a good book. So many books I read just don't stick with me like that. And that book really does. Malibu Rising does a little bit, but not as much as that book. It's just so good. And if you don't like historical fiction or think you don't, give this book a try because Marshall didn't think he liked historical fiction and then he picked up this book. It was was really good. You get into these characters' feelings very well. And Mm -hmm. that's that's just her strength in writing those. Yeah. Just a, as another thing, there was two comic books that were five star for me. One of them was Silver Surfer Black, which you saw me reading and you knew, looking at this artwork, it was a drug trip. Oh, it was really crazy. It was bizarre, but it, there was a reason for it. And it was such a good way of telling the story. The other one was Captain Marvel Stay Fly. And this one focuses on her in space with her little cat. And it's so cute, and it's really heartwarming. The flurkin? The flurkin. Although uh, in, in this, um, the flurkin is named Chewy uh-huh. and is female. Oh, all right. And has babies. Oh. You get to see a whole bunch of baby flurkins. It's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> so that just brings us to the big one here. And this, the reason why we saved it for last is because when Marshall and I were talking about it, I was like, okay, what's your absolute favorite book that you read in the month of May? And it turned out to be my absolute favorite book Mm -hmm. that I read in the month of May, which doesn't happen a lot for us reading the book at the same time. But in this case, we did. And I love this book so much that we're probably going to get the second one as soon as I can. And the third one is coming out this year. So exciting. And this book is called... A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. Yes. I had received this book as a gift last year by one of my friends. And not only that, our book club was reading it for the month. So we were like, perfect opportunity for me to finally read this book. The hype is real. Yeah. If you guys remember, we talked about Truly Devious, that series last year. I would say that that is a pretty good comparison to what this book series is like. Except... That the main character is so smart and savvy. Not that it wasn't savvy in Truly Devious. She was smart and she was savvy. But in this case, it was just a different kind of smart and savvy. The One of the biggest differences between the two main characters, I feel, was that in Truly Devious, she was intelligent, but she lucked into a lot of the discoveries. Mm-hmm. It just kind of came to her and then she put those pieces together. Pippa... Pippa is or also her name Poppy. Is Pippa okay? So just a just a FYI, guys. In the month of May, I read every book I read had a Pippa or a Poppy in it somewhere. <laughs> it was yeah. so weird. So yes, it's it's Pippa. It Pippa. Okay. Yeah. So Pippa is not only really dogged in in doing these. She's witty about the fact that she's socially awkward, mm-hmm. where the other one was just socially awkward. Correct. In this, Pippa knows about this really big mystery that is in the town where a really popular girl got murdered 
and the prime suspect was her boyfriend, who, the next day, committed suicide, with a glut of circumstantial evidence all over him. So everyone thinks that he did it, and he's a monster. So Pippa decides that for her senior project, she is going to solve this mystery, because she doesn't think that he did it. Because that was just a little too obvious mm-hmm. with all that circumstances. But it's a really cold case because it was like oh, yeah. five years before. Yeah, it was. And then his brother, his little brother, comes up to her and wants to help her with the case. Mm-hmm. And now she's diving into it and people are telling her to let it lie. And that's just a sign somebody knows something that mm-hmm. they shouldn't. It was very shocking. Yeah. When you finally figure out what happened in the grand scheme of things, it was, I nowhere saw it coming. None yeah. of it. it. It was very well done. They did a good job of keeping the killer off of your radar. Mm-hmm. And I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So let's talk about June really quick here because uh, June is kind of an interesting month, I have to say. So we already shared that we have been reading... Malibu Rising and The Maidens. Those are two of our much anticipated books for 2021. I just finished reading One Last Stop, which is another anticipated book for 2021. And this month, Fox in the Woods comes out Ooh. by Maureen Johnson. That's number four in the Truly Devious Universe. And Hairpin Bridge by Taylor Adams. He wrote okay. No Exit. That is also coming out this month. And I mean... <laughs> My eyes and ears will have something plugged in it at all times. So many, like, wow. (laughs) So many books. And at the same time, we're trying to read House House of of Leaves. Leaves. Which I need to go read now. But anyway, that is our May wrap-up. I hope you enjoy and that you find something new to read yourself. There is libraries upon libraries of things to read out there. A million universes, and all they want is for you to see them. Have a good night, folks. So, thank you for listening to Elated Geek. Follow us on social media for pictures and more info on things we talked about in today's podcast. You can find Lainey on at Zany Lainey or me at One True Hazard. You can also find at Elated Geek on our Instagram. And you can also find Elated Geek Tweets on Twitter. If you want to go to a website, we have www.elatedgeek.com. Links for these are in the show notes. If you want to help us to continue to bring you new and exciting things to nerd out about, please consider donating to our coffee account. The link is in the show notes and every donation is accepted with total appreciation for your support in us. Send us your geek obsessions or topics that you want us to experience and talk about in future episodes. Email us at share at elatedgeek.com. And until next time, geek out.